Uh, welcome to the DCS Head Fight Space at Munich 2023. Uh, we're here exhibiting the DCS Lena system. So this is a system purpose-built for headphone listening and it comprises on the top of the Lena network DAC. We have the Lena master clock in the middle and the Lena headphone amplifier on the bottom. Uh, so this is the first time that we've designed a product exclusively for the HeadFi space. Uh, previously, we had first entered the HeadFi space in 2018 with the Bartok headphone DAC. And based on feedback that we had from the Bartok, we realized that we needed, first of all, to uh, separate out the, the headphone amplifier from the DAC. That was something that the HeadFi community was, was quite interested in. And second of all, that it needed to be in a smaller chassis. Um, the Bartok, while it's fantastic, it's more designed for use in a two-channel rack compared to on, a, let's say, a desktop. So we needed to take all of the functionality from the Bartok and pack it into the much smaller chassis of the Lena. And the way we did that is to utilize a five-way flex ridge circuit board in the Lena. So we have one single circuit board based around the top and then the edges of the circuit board fold down for the display, the IO on the back of the unit and some other functionality. And then we have the mains transformer on the base plate of the unit. And that's what's allowed us to get all of the same technology inside of a Bartok or a Rossini into a chassis that's under half the size, uh, making it a much more desktop friendly form factor. And that's true for the master clock and the headphone amplifier as well as the DAC. So in terms of feature sets with the DAC, uh, this is pretty much identical to what you'll find in the Bartok DAC. Uh, so all of the same streaming functionality, the same set of inputs, the same analog outputs that you'll find on the Bartok and present on the Lena DAC. Um, similarly, we have the Expanse crossfeed within the DAC. Um, we have recently in March introduced a software update to the Lena DAC as well, which adds in a digital volume control to the unit. So this allows you to potentially use the DAC connect power amplifier for a two-channel system or to allow you to better match the volume of the DAC going into a headphone amplifier. Um, the master clock is a grade one master clock. Uh, we have one oven controlled crystal oscillator and one voltage controlled crystal oscillator and they're generating the 44.1 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz word clock signals respectively. On the bottom, the Lena headphone amplifier. This is the first all analog product that DCS have made. Um, so compared to the Bartok headphone DAX output stage, uh, this is a much more powerful amplifier. So one of the key things that was, uh, was present in the design process was making sure that it could drive difficult planar magnetic headphones, very insensitive headphones to a very high level. Uh, so we can drive the, the Hi-Fi Man Susfaras, for example, to 120 decibels, completely clean and unclipped. Uh, the topology of the amplifier is what some would call a, a super class AB or maybe a class AA design. Uh, so it is a, a low bias amplifier. And then we have a feedback system with a DC servo to essentially correct any errors that might happen uh, on the zero crossing point of the amplifier. What that means is we get class A behavior and class A linearity in an amplifier that is incredibly efficient and can still produce the output power necessary to drive the difficult plan on magnetic headphones. So looking at the rear panel of the units, if we start with the Lena DAC, uh, on the input side, we have the network port to connect it up for streaming functionality. We have two USB ports. The USB one connection is for connection up to a computer or a Mac. The USB 2 port is for use with USB drives to play back files stored on the USB stick. From there, we have several SP diff inputs. So we have three, one on an RCA connector, one on a BNC connector, and one on a TOS link for an optical connection from something like a TV. We then have a pair of AES inputs that can either be used individually or as a dual AES pair. Then at the bottom, we have the two word clock inputs for connection up to an external master clock. Um, the Lena DAC will automatically detect which of these two inputs has a 44.1 kilohertz signal and which has a 48 kilohertz signal and use that input um, based on the content that it's playing. Over on the left hand side, we have the outputs of the DAC. Uh, so like all DCS DACs, we have a proper balanced output. So this is um, generated independently of the unbalanced output and it's uh, properly floating. 
and then we have unbalanced outputs on RCA connectors. Um, like Again, like all DCS DACs, these can be used simultaneously. So because they're independently generated and buffered, you can have the XLR connectors connected to one system, one amplifier, and the RCA connectors onto another, and both will work together perfectly. Uh, we have two RJ45 connectors on the bottom left hand side here and these are the power link connectors yeah so used with a very short uh, rj45 cable these allow all three units to be powered up and down at the same time together uh, so it works much like a trigger moving down to the lena master clock we have the two word clock outputs on the unit here so output one is where we'll get the 44.1 kilohertz word clock signal from and output two, the 48 kilohertz word clock signal. And then we have, again, the two power link connectors here. Moving down to the Lena headphone amplifier, the inputs of the unit are a little bit different here to what might be seen on other units. So we have, first of all, a standard unbalanced input on RCA connectors, and then two sets of balanced inputs. And this was quite unique to the design of the Lena headphone amplifier. So most headphone amplifiers tend to have a higher input impedance. The reason being is it means that the, the amplifier is more likely to work with a wider range of source devices. So you don't need a very particular source device uh, to drive the amplifier. The downside of that is it means that you have to use buffer stages within the amplifier, which overall re can reduce the quality of the system as you have more components in the signal chain. So with the leaner amplifier, what we did instead was to opt for both. So on the right hand side, the buffered balanced input offers a higher input impedance. Um, so if you are using a source device with a higher output impedance, maybe a, a valve source device, this allows the amplifier to be driven much easier. Um, the buffer stage here is actually technology which was borrowed directly from the DCS 904, which is one of our professional analog to digital converters. The unbuffered balanced input on the left hand side here, uh, this is a, uh, a much lower input impedance, so it requires a source device with a lower output impedance to drive it. But doing so removes the buffer from the signal chain, uh, which means that you can get higher quality out of the amplifier. So the absence of the buffer means that we can utilize technologies like shunt feedback to eliminate common mode problems across the inputs. Um, so the flexibility of the inputs on the Lena headphone amplifier is uh, quite a unique offering. Um, and it means that whatever source device you're using, irrespective of, uh, of, of its output capabilities, it will happily drive the Lena headphone amplifier. We have a number of features on the Lena DAC which can be customized to the user's preference. And these include features for the user interface as well as features which change the sound quality of the product. And these are all accessed by the front panel of the unit. So looking at the display, we have four touchscreen buttons on the front here. The button on the left selects the input to allow the user to change the source that they're listening to. The middle two buttons here are customizable. So the user can assign a favorite setting to these buttons so that they have quick access. And the way you do that is by pressing and holding the menu button on the right hand side. And you can then cycle through the available options here. So you can have filter choice, upsampling choice, crossfeed, all easily accessible via the front panel. Inside the menu, a lot of the features here will be familiar to those who've used DCS DACs in the past. So within processing, we have the option for crossfeed, and this includes the standard crossfeed implementation, as well as the patented DCS expanse of E1 and E2. We have two options for PCM filters, filter one and filter two and these offer either better transient response from the filter or better Nyquist image rejection. We have four DSD filters available and they offer increasingly sharp cutoffs for the out-of-band DSD noise. So filter one is the widest bandwidth and progressing through to filters two, three and four the cutoff point for the filter becomes gradually lower to remove more of the out-of-band noise from DSD. We have customizable upsampling on the Lena DAC. So we have the option of either the standard DXD upsampling or DSD, which adds in an additional DSD oversampling phase uh, towards the end of the oversampling process. 
And then finally, we have the ability to invert the phase of the outputs to correct for phase issues elsewhere in the system. Under the device settings, we have options to change the sync mode of the DAC. So letting the DAC know whether it's locking to an external master clock or whether it's using its own internal clock or locking on to the timing within an AES or an SPDIF signal. We have the option for dual AES to change between automatic, off and on. And this dictates how the unit acts with its dual AES inputs on the rear. We have the ability to change the USB class for either class one or class two operation. We have the buffer here and the buffer adds in a short delay to the audio signal and it helps reduce any clicks and pops that might occur with changes to the DSP chain. So moving from one sample rate to another, for example. Like the other DCS DACs, we have a variable output voltage as well. So the user can select from 0.2 volts, 0.6 volts, 2 volts or 6 volts maximum output level. And this helps pair the DAC with any amplifier they're wanting to use. And from the test section, we have the channel check feature um, to ensure that the outputs of the DAC are wired to the correct channels. And then a burn in function as well, which will play modulated pink noise through the DAC um, to burn in electronics or transducers that are connected up. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this has been DCS at Munich 2023. Um, if you haven't been able to attend the show this year, hopefully you're able to get to your local uh, DCS retailer for a listen to these wonderful products soon.